No, this is the same. This is the same space that you that we were in the last time. Um, it's yeah, exactly been the same. Inside that closet, it looks much bigger than it is. <laughs> and that desk looks noticeably cleaner. Looks like you've done some redecorating. It's Lovely. all out of shot of the camera. There's so much mess where you can't see. It just below screen. It's <laughs> yep. chaos. That's it. Yeah, there's so many things on the floor and out of shot. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be this this tiny cupboard if it weren't like that. Um. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, let's 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 do the thing. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest, she's an actor, streamer, and expert crocheter. Just don't ask her about the weather. Adelaide Kane. Welcome to this week's episode of the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson, and my guest today is Adelaide Kane. Hello, Addie. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Long time no speak. What's up? I know. I know, long time no speak, but very, very nice to have you here. Thank you for doing me a solid and coming on the, on this uh, experiment. Uh, what are we drinking this morning? Um, black English breakfast tea. Just black. Just black, nothing in it. Just Sorry. Black. Yeah, just full. If I feel nauseous later, I blame you. Mm. I'm drinking Marks and Spencers in uh, gold blend black tea because I'm a classy bitch. <laughs> oh, Marks and Sparks. Eh? I'm I'm drinking uh, Trader Joe's, just just English breakfast tea. I've Trader Joe's. Good tea pigs, bag stuff for um, sun tea. I've been making sun tea because it's been so bloody hot. So sun tea is is what it says on the tin, right? You just put it in a cold water and the sun warms it up. No, you don't have to buy specific sun tea. Like that's 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 marketing. That's <laughs> bullshit. So no, you just take. Um, like one tea bag for per like eight ounces slash five six hundred mils of water, and dump it in the water in like a glass jar or container. You do a mason jar, or you can do a big carafe or whatever, and then just stick it outside in the sun all day. Wow! Just it there. Wow! Yeah. Then bring it in. There you go. Sun tea. And and so it's just the heat of it just makes it great. Yeah, just the gentle, the gentle heat. Um, it brews slowly through over the day, so it's not even remotely bitter. Wow! So it's like, yeah, and it's it's not as strong as like hot tea, but for me who likes drinking tea all day, it's nice to have something slightly less caffeinated to just yeah. shove in a cup, shove in one of my Starbucks to go cups. <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> Trader Joe's is definitely like the one thing that I'm that I know everyone in Canada wishes we had. Trader Joe's is like fully up there in in jealous Trader territory. Trader Joe's is pretty. It's pretty excellent. I will say, the one downside about Trader Joe's is that one, they give you way, way, way too many zucchini when you buy zucchini. You can't just buy one. That you have to buy a pack of like three. Oh, that's like too much zucchini. Like I don't, I don't eat zoodles. That's too much zucchini for one person, um, especially since they don't freeze well. And also, there's like some things that they just don't have. Like they don't carry like Coca Cola, which is fine because Coca Cola. Do they sucks. not? No, no, they have their own brands of like sodas and stuff, and they carry some brand names, but it's all it's all smaller stuff. They don't carry like anything really big box like that. Oh. So they have their own cola soda, but Coca-Cola is something I keep around because I have many friends that get motion sick and get nauseous on a regular basis, and that's the one thing that knocks it on its head. Coca-Cola helps with nausea? Uh-huh. Yep, because Coca-Cola has so much sugar in it that there's also a chemical in it to prevent you from vomiting the sugar right back up. So, no, that's not true. I, hand to the Lord, Meryl Streep. I read it on the internet. It's true, but it does seem what? to help. What? And I think it might be the. I I, it, I genuinely think it's the sugar because uh, a lot of people I know when they get like it's very it's very grounding for people who are nauseous. A couple of sips of Coca Cola, the like something about the formula will knock it on its head. I am flabbergasted. Uh, that won't work for something like food poisoning, or yeah, like stomach bug. But like my partner, when she is like really nauseous or has really bad headaches that cause nausea, my brother. Yesterday, he's with me at the moment. He had a migraine. He was really nauseous and he was slamming a Coke. And for both of them, it helps them with their nausea. This is, this is wild to me. I, I, two I, out of two I, nausea stuff is. 
Oh if, my um, god! Wow, I've got to try that then. I don't Damn. really get nauseous, so. Hmm. I found I'm getting like getting into the era of being an old man. I really do feel uh, the nausea come on more often, and I'm like, oh god, is this like a regular thing now? No, no, you have to be so much more careful now because I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. If I try and take Advil, paracetamol on an empty stomach, forget about it. If I try to yeah. drink tea or coffee on an empty stomach, I am notified about the stupidity of that decision really rapidly, <laughs> much faster. And, and I'm trying to decide whether or not it's getting older. My body's just like, oh, I'm so much more sensitive. Or yeah. if it's always been like this and I just, didn't listen to my body and didn't notice because I was so busy riding it into the ground. Right. Yeah, that's very true. Is it? Is it my body or is it me? I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm I've always pride, prided. Pride. I've always t- prided. taken pride. Th- prided. Taken prided myself. Myself on my like, on my like iron stomach. Usually, even if I eat stuff that doesn't make me feel great, it takes a. That's great for a podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh i i always notice like i might feel a bit uneasy but i don't feel like i need to throw up like i'll feel like oh that, that that didn't sit right but as i've gotten older it started to it started to be like oh i could i could maybe vomit right now that's not a that's not a good thing no no it's really it's really interesting and i've started cooking a lot more i haven't I hadn't been cooking for like a long time because it's been really it's been busy and it's been hectic and in my old apartment before I moved into this house I didn't have a dishwasher which threw me right back to childhood hand washing all my dishes mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and I just didn't want to cook all that much because I didn't want to have to scrub everything but I've started cooking again like I'll like significantly more and I'm just like oh it's so much easier on my stomach oh, it's so yeah. much easier and I'm just like oof, because I love eating out and I really love food and it's one of the things i miss about toronto is like just the insane food yeah we have. got good there's food good food here. here in los angeles but it's like you know 60 dollars per person for a meal and that's without drinks and i don't drink alcohol anymore but mm. it's still it's really expensive and then it's a toss-up whether or not i'm going to be able to digest it without shitting through the eye of a needle later and i just <laughs> It's not my ideal way of living, Miles. It's not. <laughs> it's just not. It's no? Just, it's not. It's not how no. you want to live my life. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I've been cooking more, and it's been a while since I've cooked, and especially since my brother's here because he's fucking useless. Um, and when my mum was here, all she did was bake things and was, like, force-feeding me bread, and I'm like, Mother, I'm... Right. Yeah, Stop. Yeah. 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 But I picked up cooking again, and I've like just sort of half-assed a bunch of meals since my brother's been here. And I was like, "Oh, oh, oh I'm actually quite good. I'm yeah. actually quite." Yeah. And I was thinking about it. And I was like, "What's the difference? Because I can bake and I can make sweets and candy, no issue. Mm-hmm. But like real food, like people food, like actual meals, I'm garbage at. I'm really garbage at it. It's always like a little undercooked or a little overcooked. And I was like, "Why am I doing so much better this time around?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah." Had a lot of therapy since the last time I had a, a really good operating kitchen. A lot more patient now. Interesting. I'm Interesting. More yeah. I'm less. I'm less fidgety and irritable. So, like, I made steaks for my mom and I while she was here, and steaks something I've never quite mastered because they're really difficult. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to Google it because I think I know how to make a steak, but I'm going to Google it. I'm going to try a, a proper way according yeah. to the internet. Yeah. I did the olive oil on each side and I heated the pan. I dropped the water on it and it was like, and I was like, okay, great. And I slapped the steaks on and then I like nudged them because apparently you do that so it doesn't stick, according to Jujal. Yep. And then I set a timer and I left them the fuck alone (laughs) for four minutes. (laughs) And I, I had prepped them, I had taken them out, I had patted them dry, I had rubbed them with like salt and pepper. Yeah, and then I had like marinated them in a little bit of, um, what did I use? Uh, I used a, a soy sauce and um, balsamic. Mm, and I just left them like that, and then I patted them dry again, and then brushed them with olive oil. And I left them alone for four minutes, and then I went back and was like, 
we're just doing this the way the instructions say and I'm not yeah. going to sweat it because I get anxious and I want to touch stuff and I want to peel up things and I'm like I think they're wrong because I think I because I'm a Leo I think I know better than everybody about everything and I have three <laughs> Capricorn placements in my chart so I really even when I pretend I think I'm wrong I don't I think I'm right about everything all the time it's really unbelievably obnoxious and I flipped them left them alone for another four minutes and they were the best like medium well steaks ever because my mom has her steak medium well they were great let them rest cut them open and I was like yeah so it turns out if you just let food cook and don't ride its ass yeah like tailgating some idiot driver on the 101 it it works it works yeah yeah I think that I've learned that with fish specifically I do a lot of salmon and and for a, the first first few times I did salmon with skin on, I was like trying to I was trying to flip it early, and it was sticking to the pan. I was like, oh, what am I doing wrong? But you just have to like you just have to leave it alone, which is so, you so like on me with that fish with skin, absolutely not. Yeah, no, you just got to leave it alone. Well, I think maybe maybe you should try it now. You've got the patience. You just put it in the pan and leave it. You just yeah, leave I it alone. Figured out how to shallow fry. Yeah, I made it. What you call it? I'm so, oh god, I'm really struggling with my brain today. Um, tempura. I made tempura at home, bro. Ooh. Like vegetable tempura. My tempura Very sauce nice. absolutely needs some work. It was extremely bland. A white woman wrote down that recipe on <laughs> allrecipes.com for sure. <laughs> there, there was no one of Japanese descent involved in that marinade for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was easy. It was easy and it was fine. I felt like a witch, this like bubbling pot of oil, just dropping lightly battered vegetables into like shh. I was like, oh. yeah especially when you have like a set of it uh, that's what i found recently is when i have like a list of ingredients and i have the instructions written out it, it does feel kind of like ooh, um, potion making making. Some, yeah potion making for sure the one thing that i struggle with is when it's when i, I have like several ingredients in the fridge and i don't know a recipe that i could make with them i don't have that that like culinary intelligence to be like oh i could make a, a stir fry with this this and this or i could make like a a ragu or whatever or blah 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 i, I don't have that so I, if i have the if i have the instructions and the ingredients i'm good if i don't have the instructions or i have like a select amount like i do terribly on those shows that are like we put this unassuming guy into a kitchen with five ingredients and he has to come up with three meals or whatever that i would i would suffer great i'd be out of round one I'm good at that I'm oh really good at that. Mm. but i i think that that's a extremely broke childhood to extremely broke adulthood mm. to a can't afford food at restaurants so i need to learn how to cook decent food at home pipeline but I know you, you didn't grow up super... No, but I would just eat beans on toast. That was that was it for me. i just get cans of beans and loaves of bread and eat beans on toast every meal. Beans on toast is pretty... Diff- like, beans are pretty difficult to find here because you end up with refried beans and I was like... That's not and Maybe same. it's also my mum being a nurse and her insistence on, like, you must have... But, no, okay, so here's a hot tip. Mm. Um, if you've got vegetables just sitting in your fridge and you don't know what to do with them, provided they're not lettuce. Lettuce and tomato are exempt from this, um, but just chop them up into, like, equal-sized cubes. And if you've got, like, kale or some kind of, like, sautéable vegetable, throw them in a pan with some olive oil and some, like, and salt and pepper. And then Google, like, sources for bowls. Like, you know, rice bowls mm-hmm, that you get from, like, mm-hmm. vegan places and stuff? Yeah. Or, like, shove it in the oven. If you have, like, carrots and bell peppers and, you know, half a slightly soft zucchini and whatever, shove it in the oven, roast it up in cubes, and then cook up some rice and whatever protein you have around, just shred it. Whatever it is, just cut it and and add it and then look up a bowl sauce, like a green goddess sauce, or I make a ginger honey tahini one. Because half the time you have a bunch of condiments in your cupboard that you don't really use all that much. Mm-hmm. And you just look up a recipe, just mix it all together, make some rice, throw the vegetables on it, and then just put sauce on it. Just cook them a super basic bitch way and then make a couple of sauce. And then you go, you've got bowls for days. All right, I'll do that then. This is just as a thought. That's always my go-to is like roast it, just stick it in the oven. Put it in the oven and hope for the best. Put it in the oven and put it on 
something like on pasta, on rice, usually rice. I don't know why, why that was the case for me, where I just, I kind of, maybe it's just like, I, it's the same as like interior decorating. I, I don't have any, I'm so worried about getting it wrong that I don't want to go near it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's a bit of cultural conditioning too, because you're a dude. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is like, true. I got dragged, I still get dragged to Target to look at cushions. And even I am like, I have too many cushions. I'm one of the only women I know that only has a few cushions. And the decorative cushions that I have, two of them are mine, and the rest are all ones that my mother has pressed upon me. <laughs> what, when why she do left, you think she was like, is? you need eight by ten pillow inserts for the pillows I bought for my room, because the spare room is now her room, because that's how it always goes whenever I have more than one bedroom. Right. Why? Why do you? Why do you think that is? Why do? Why do you think that the cushions are are a a cultural uh, pillar? I just, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. So okay, we're, we're we're strapped in. We're gonna go all the way back. It's like Neolithic hunter gatherer days. Okay. Um. No, I think it, I think it's more a conversation of like, uh, and I know they did a whole study on this, whether it's been disproved or whatever but women tend to be more detail oriented Mm -hmm. right even down to like our scope of vision we have a much wider scope of vision than uh men do Mm -hmm. and men and women both you know hunted and gathered um significantly and there's there's an interesting study that came out recently um that yeah i think i saw that better hunters than men because they hunted in groups Mm -hmm. whereas Mm -hmm. uh men tend to be more individualistic and more single-minded in some of their thinking and it's a whole conversation about whether that's nature versus nurture. And the answer is obviously it's both, um, you know, like developing clinical depression later in life. It just depends on which genes are flipped for any given person. But generally speaking, uh, women are more detail oriented. Um, and we've been socialized to be more detail oriented. We've been socialized to clean house, keep house, to keep ourselves, to, to keep Mm -hmm. track of, all of that, you have to be really sensitive to find details. If you have babies, if you're raising children, sensitive to, you know, your community, to small shifts. Um, so I do think it sort of comes down to a socialization in that my brother wasn't dragged to Target to look at cushions as a teenager. I was. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mum didn't reach for my brother to teach him how to make the pasta that we had every Wednesday. I was the eldest and I'm a girl. And that tends to fall to female children. Um, and it, it'll, I think you probably would have, you'd be more on the pulse mm-hmm. if perhaps you were like an only child. And if your mother wasn't particularly domestic either, I think that's also like a thing. Mm-hmm. But I think generally speaking, a lot of dads kind of take over their son's raising and a lot of mums take over their daughter's raising, uh, or at least did. Not so much anymore. I think our generation is, is being uh, a lot more, even handed as parents. Mm. Yeah, I do think it's just socialization. And like, even I don't think I'm very good at interior decorating. And I only deter- was determined to become good at cooking because I couldn't afford to eat out and I wanted to eat good food because I'm a, a greedy, greedy, greedy guts. <laughs> and then after Toronto, particularly when I was living in Toronto and had all this amazing food, I was like, I really, okay, I need to get serious about being able to cook well. And I'm not an incredible cook, don't get me wrong, but I'm good. I can like, Turn out a recipe and have it be pretty decent mm. first try for most things. Where did you go when you were in Toronto? Did you have a favorite restaurant? Uh, yes, my favorite restaurant was Bar Isabel. Bar Isabel? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I've only gone past there, but, I've, but I, I, I've had people go there and say it was really good. Yeah, it's been many, many years, but I used to go there so often that I would call and be like, hi, I yeah, just like a table for one, like maybe like the seat up at the bar and the, the host would be like, yes, Miss Kane. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, I'll give you my input. Yes, Miss Kane. No, I, I recognize your voice. We'll yeah. put your seat aside for you. And I was like, yeah, it's a very expensive restaurant too. And yeah. I look back at like the 25, 26 year old me that was like a regular at Bar as well. And I'm like, what? Mm. I mean, I was living, it's living. It was before I had a mortgage, so I guess I was like, "Woo, live it up." Do you think does that does that freak you out? The 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 kind of um, because because there's people that will be like, "Oh, if people if people recognize it, like know who I am at the at the place that I've gone to many times, I can never go back." No, no, I'm not that famous, bro. 
like no no less about the fame it's just like being going there so regularly that people like know you from you being there regularly well it depends on who it is that knows if it's the people that work there staff just know me because i'm there all the time i don't care about that that's great wonderful i like being a local it makes me feel comfortable and secure and i'm a, I'm a creature of habit i'm very repetitious in my behavior mm-hmm. um which is something i've actually been working on <laughs> I, if it was like people who started going to the restaurant more often in the hopes to like run into me and become friends that's mm. a little weird but yeah that's weird when i go to restaurants by myself i'm not trying to be social like i take a book and i'm i'm there to eat my yummy food and read my book and yeah have a cocktail and then leave I suppose that was a dumb question because that's how we got to know each other in the first place was that I was, I knew you regularly from making your coffee every day. Mm-hmm. For the audience, for the audience on Spotify, Adelaide is just chugging a massive amount of smoothie for a moment. It's raspberry chocolate. Raspberry chocolate. Yum. Trying the smoothie thing. Uh, smoothies only work for me in the summer. Yeah. I can't do smoothies in the winter. No, it's too, it's too much. It's too heavy too heavy for me when it's in, and especially because it's you know it's got to be cold and stuff it's just otherwise it's soup and then you just got fruit soup and that's not good well fruit soup i don't have any objection to when it's hot you'd have hot fruit soup no in the summer when it is hot outside oh <laughs> <laughs> i thought you meant oh you didn't, i didn't say it was a good host <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have fruit you'd have cold fruit soup in the summer yeah but cold things when it's hot hot things when it's cold i'm very much ayurvedic in that sense run the window oh no they've been, walking, they've, they've been walking they've been walking in and out of they've been walking in and out of shot for the whole time yeah they're not they're not loving but i'm not out there doing things yeah Addie has a second cat you have a second cat I do. You just got a second cat. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? I don't know. I had a thought. Very painful. But what did it go? Well, anyway. Oh, <laughs> right. You want to hear something embarrassing? Of course. <laughs> of course. Me, so... and, me and the five listeners would love to hear. <laughs> no, no. I know this is actually quite, quite cringe. This is actually quite embarrassing. I'm so, ready. I'm locked in. Know, I, I grew up in Australia, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And in Australia, because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, like summer is over Christmas. Yep. Yep. So Christmas is summer months and it's like November, December, January, I want to say, mm-hmm. ish. Mm-hmm. I haven't really paid much attention to the seasons my entire life, um, which is weird considering how into fashion I am. But mm-hmm. I haven't really paid much attention. So this year, because like it's been a pretty rough couple of years. Not in the sense that, like, oh, terrible. Th- well, yes, terrible things have been happening. But also, like, it's just been very unstable for me. I've been bopping around a lot. And then I got this new job. And, like, very good things and, and difficult. And, like, I was stuck in Europe for a year. And mm-hmm. it's been a lot going on. It's been very it's been very difficult. And then it's been very stressful. And there's been a lot of change happening very rapidly. And I was like, right. So I'm going to wrap up the season of Grey's. I know I have another season. Amazing. I'm going to freeze my eggs which I did, and uh, that has really done a number on my hormones. I've gained, like, 15 pounds since then. And they were like, oh, no, 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 you'll lose the weight. No, I have not. Oh, uh, okay. And so that's been a really, honestly, like, a really helpful conversation with myself about, like, my body and my eating and my health. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just, like, we're not. We're not going to get too stressed about this. We're going to. Yeah, no, no, should you? Eat a little healthier and start going for walks and see what happens. Because if this is where my body is happy being now, after I asked such a big task of it, then so be it. Um, having nothing fit was really stressful, though. But I went and did that, and I bought a house, and I got a kitten, and I was like, great, so I'm going to knock this off during the break. And then, of course, we went on strike. Um, LA is a union town. Uh, I was like, and then I can enjoy my summer and I can relax. I was like yesterday years old when I realized that summer in the US starts in June. (laughs) And I say this with my whole chest. 
<laughs> I thought summer started in July and August was midsummer. <laughs> and I still had another month to go. I didn't realize that the summer was already over, that I moved house in the summer, summer, because it didn't feel like summer. It didn't, we had June gloom the entire month of June. So I was like, yeah, this is like the tag end of spring for sure. It was deceptive. And also I'm an idiot. For a very smart woman, I'm fucking... How long have you been in the Northern Hemisphere? Most of your life. 13 years. <laughs> but I've never really had like a summer. I've never really had like a summer because I've always been doing other jobs or I've been coming back to Los Angeles to see my friends or I've been, you know, bopping about. I don't think I've ever had... I don't think my anxiety has ever been low enough for me to stop and be like, oh, I'm going to plan the season. I'm going to mm-hmm. do things this season. Especially since with my green card processing, I can't leave the country. Right. So I, I didn't have an opportunity to just like book a flight somewhere and go travel and just forget that it was summer, having summer somewhere else. Like I don't think about it in such concrete terms. So I've been here just taking care of stuff and time has been creeping by like, you know, this inevitable avalanche coming to crash me. And I blinked and I was like, oh, wait, no, I need to actually do something fun this summer. Like I did the IVF and I've adjusted the kitten and I'm, you know, bought this house and I dealt with the toilets backing up and there being raw sewage underneath the brand new house. I, it's been busy. Yeah. And then I blinked and I was like, oh, right, right, right. Summer, summer. Okay, cool. All of that's done. I did I did it. I ticked off my laundry list of things. Very stressful. Last well, couple of years have been very stressful and now it's time to have a summer only for it to be August and the last month of summer. Doesn't LA have like summer for most of the year though? Like, isn't it going to be November and still pretty sunny? Yeah, but... Uh, but Miles, it's 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 the vibe. It's the vibe. Oh, it's of the it. vibe it's of the, summer. I see. It's the it's the it's the emotional connection to the time. It's the vibe out there with everybody else. It was all going. To, everyone was going to Positano and Japan and like Saint Tropez, and I was like, first of all, I dare you all go to Japan without me. Second of all, how are you affording this? But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't just buy a house, so. That's it. Yeah. Who needs a house when I can go to Japan? Very anxious, anxious flex there because, oh, mortgage. Mm. Mortgage. Mm. Terrifying. And I'm like, guy, waiting for the strike to end. But also at the same time, striking has been, like, strike season has been Mm. great. And we can't talk about all the, I know I referenced, but besides the point. Yeah, I've been going picketing with uh, some of my castmates from various projects, and it really is. It's bec- it's truly become like social time. Like my summer social calendar is just like reaching out to like old friends and old coworkers and being like, "Hi, if you're in town, you want to like grab a coffee and pick it together." I bought boba glasses and like the, the little popping fruit gels because I make so much tea in the summer, and I've been making like little bobas. That's boba sweet. Glasses, but yeah, picketing has become like a social occasion. It's like, okay, who do I want to see this week? And then you meet up and you go for a little walk and you have a little catch up and talk about how emotionally scarred you were by the pandemic and bought, like do a little bit of trauma bonding with old friends. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. It steps in. So still haven't got a tan yet, though. That was something I wanted to do this summer. Was like, yeah, get a see tan. See if I could still tan. Mm. I haven't even burnt. Well, I mean, I mean, given given the 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 lack of tree cover and what have you, I imagine it's it's not going to be difficult for you. With uh... well, there's 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 two studios in the valley that have excellent tree coverage. Um, I see. So much so that I took my mother with me. Hey! Oh, oh, you're gonna. I bet love she loved it. This. <laughs> you you know, Nini, you know, Mama Kane. I took her picketing with me twice, and we took a little um beach chair for her and then she bought me a backpack with like a a built a cooler built into it to take to work oh that's good really so i could take my lunch to work very sweet as if i don't have a little fridge and the whole thing anyway so we took her with like a little a cooler and and whatever and i set her up under a tree because you can't walk for huge amounts of time sure um and just like set her up with like a fan she wrote hands off my daughter's face on the fan and then she just sort of would sit there and the first time we took her I came back and someone had given her a sag after sign something that I had been looking for for the last couple of pickets couldn't find one not for love nor money someone had just given her one 
Mm. And she'd been interviewed. She, my mother, no, no, no. She'd been interviewed by sag Variety, <laughs> and Deadline. <laughs> Variety and Deadline, the two biggest online sources for industry news. She had been interviewed. She she got more press than I get in a month paying a publicist. <laughs> Just sitting in her like floral silk shirt yeah. and her linen pants with her claw clip and her glasses in the shade. Wow. You know, with her giant water bottle. Good for her. Making friends. <laughs> and you could actually, I'm not going to say my mom's full full name on the podcast, but I'll, you can look her up via deadline and look her up via variety and she's quoted in the articles amazing as my mother amazing and she started calling herself nepo mum while she was here she was like i'm a nepo mum she's like i'm gonna start an instagram i'm gonna have a podcast and be a nepo mum oh my god okay well she needs to be my next guest clearly and profit (laughs) off your career and i was like well it's taking you long enough to do it (laughs) i'm like most most parents do that when they're when their kids are young and impressionable and they can steal from them. And she was like, well, I don't need your money, do I? It would be nice to be famous by proximity. And I was like, go for it. Nepotism at its finest. The only true way. I'd follow her. To do, to do nepotism ethically. Yeah. My mother. Yeah. Deciding she's a nepo mom. Like, like the Kardashians. <laughs> I'd buy her book, her cookbook or what have you. Oh my gosh. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever kind of side hustle she decides to throw out there, I'd, I'd buy it. Oh god, she's so funny, and she's, she was making like memes too. She was like doing, she was, she's using editing tools. She had one picture which was like her doing her makeup, and then, um, what's what are the Kardashians' mom's name? What's her name? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm the worst when it comes Kylie to the Kardashians. Whatever, their mum. Yes getting full glam done and she she put them side by side and her caption underneath was not what i expected when i came to visit my daughter in los angeles hashtag never mom and i was like mom (laughs) she's learned she's learning image editing she's really investing in this never mom thing and it's just it's really quality content oh god what a great time what a great time i bet everyone loved her in other news, I picked up crochet in January. As one does? How was that? No, no, you don't understand. Because you know I have ADHD. Yes, of course. You know that course. I get a little... Yes, yes. ...about things sometimes. So I made a bunch of baby clothes, right? Because all yeah. my friends keep having bloody children. And, and I made them a couple of baby blankets, and then I found this pattern online, and I was like, ooh, that looks like fun. Not... Not realizing how big it was. You made that for the podcast listeners. Ad Addy is holding up a yeah. What, what would you describe it as? It's a panel blanket, like a it's like, like a, a mandala panel blanket almost. It has a name. It's it's like a special pattern maker who does it. And this has taken me about two months because you got to do each panel and each tri- triangle individually. I finally attached them all, and now I'm edging it. That's so impressive. Isn't it though? It really, is. It myself. is the si- It is almost the full length of Adelaide completely. It is. It well, is I like it was going to be like a little lap rug, and it's like a full size blanket. It's a full size blanket. Uh, it's gorgeous and it's very impressive. Congratulations but, on that. Thank you. I didn't realize it was going to be quite so big, and I was like, oh, I'll just I'll do it once as an experiment. So I bought like cheap acrylic yarn because I was like, I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on yarn for a pattern when I'm just like a beginner level crocheter I think I'm comfortably in the intermediate realm now yeah and then it ended up being really good and I'm like oh I wish I'd I wish I'd use better yarn for it well that'll be the next one when you start your side hustle of selling selling crochet blankets no absolutely not you know why <laughs> because I got too into it yeah you're gonna really love this mm-hmm. talk about the consequences of your actions and getting older I got so I was crocheting so madly that I have a ganglion cyst in my wrist. Oh my called a Bible bump. <laughs> crocheting so furiously, I now have a little cyst in my wrist. 
You can see it. I have to go get it <laughs> surgically removed, Miles. <laughs> Lanced like a boil. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, no, I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> you grew a cyst no. from too much crochet. I got a cyst from too much crochet. Keep in mind, I learned in January and I started this blanket. Wow. I achieved an intermediate level of mastery within about three months and then started this blanket. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So I either have to rest this wrist for like six weeks. Yeah. And I've been laying off the crochet a little, even though it's, it, it kills me inside that blanket isn't done. I've been like chilling with it and it has been improving because my mobility and, and pain, it sucks. And I want to go to the gym and I want to work out. So you couldn't move your wrist properly. I didn't have a full range of motion. So wow. even doing this is, yeah. is a little painful. Wow. Um, so I couldn't go to yoga. I couldn't go to Pilates unless I, I have to wrap my wrist and yoga. I have to do everything on my knuckles or I have to alter everything because too much pressure is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just too much. Yeah. Of, of all things to yeah. like, mm, take me out. A ganglion cyst, crochet cyst. <laughs> Can you believe it? Ridiculous. I mean, that's if I think that, I think that you should wear that as a badge of honor, to be honest. It's really common in like the crochet community. The crochet community, <laughs> much like the knitting and sewing community is like really savage. So <laughs> I'm not going to be putting out crochet content because they'll, they'll eat me alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that, I'm sure that the people that the, the listen to this will be like, oh God, what an amateur. Getting a ganglion there's cyst, absolutely, honestly. There's, I guarantee you there's going to be someone who listens to this who's like, should have put a tennis ball and a crochet hook, rookie mistake. Should Okay, you need to go into this. Why does why do you put a, a tennis ball? So wait, you put a tennis ball through? And then you hold the tennis ball. Yeah, so you put the, the, oh. the hook, you drill a hole through the tennis ball and you put the hook through and it's ergonomic instead of paying $40 for an ergonomic hook because you need 80,000 hooks. Wow. God, I learned something today. Wow. I bought tennis balls and then I didn't put them on the hooks because I didn't know how to punch a hole in the tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have enough money to buy the ergonomic hooks, but no. I, I didn't buy the tennis balls. I put tennis balls on my hooks and then I haven't done it because I don't know how to punch a hole in the tennis ball without cutting my finger off. <laughs> Oh, oh no, God! Oh, I'm really crushing God. it, Miles. I'm just—it's like the pandemic all over again. I'm just trying yeah. to figure out what to do with myself. <laughs> Too much comedic relief. Crikey. Wow. I mean, I mean, you know, live and learn. You've le you've learned you've learned a, a true lesson. I think I think you can call yourself a professional crocheter now because you've gone through it. You've you've learned firsthand the the. The rookie mistakes, right? Yeah, of what happens when you don't do your research. The dangers of crochet should have been the first thing I googled when I picked it up. That's it. The dangers of crochet. That being said, since I can't crochet as much anymore, it's time to get back into my other ridiculous, stupid hobby. Streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Legos. Legos! Yes. Yeah, because I, I and I like the nano blocks, so I want to collect all of the original 150 Pokemon. Oh yeah, and build them. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. Put up like a little narrow shelf. You can't really see it from where you are, but there's a. I've got a good foot and a half of space above my bookshelves, and I want to put a little shelf up there and like pop all my. But I was in Portland with my partner, and we went to this little shop called Stumptown Otaku, um, which obviously. And look, look at this little box. So it's a Loz Mini, and this one is a mini um, Ryokan. It's like a, a, a mini, like a tiny little Lego um, hot springs. Adorable. Yeah, and then you make a little Lego like ramen shop and a kimono shop and then a match tea shop, and you can pop them all together and you can make a little town out of them. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't it cute? And then I was also like, you know, I'm in a new house and I'm like slowly but surely replacing my furniture and deciding whether I want to put wallpaper up and, you know, make it chic or whatever. Yeah. And I was looking at coffee tables and when we went to this shop, they had, as Spy Family is one of my favorite animes, um, they had a whole Lego set of the entire apartment from Spy Family. Okay. Like six boxes. Oh, six boxes. 
Yeah, because each room. Yeah, because, oh, right, okay, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, ooh. So me being the impulsive creature that I am, bought all six of them and had them Love shipped it. here. Of course and you I'm did. And I'm like, right, now how am I going to display this? And I, I've gone from like, oh, I want a really like stylish, like, like wood rock or something like coffee table, like some yeah. $2,000 monstrosity from who knows where to display coffee table big enough for the entire <laughs> because how else am i what else am i gonna do i like it has to be like am i going to glue it and then install it to the bloody ceiling i mean that is an idea i mean you could you own a house now you can do whatever you like install it like sideways and put it in a shadow box make yeah. it and then pull it apart again i don't know no you wouldn't want to do well i mean you could do that if it's. Do you get more enjoyment of ha- about having the thing or about putting it together? <sighs> column A, column B. But once I've once I've put something together, I'm like done that. I don't. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. No. No. And no, then no. I like looking at. So yeah. I'm not. I can't. Like that's why I never got into puzzles. Even though I like putting stuff together, because you make them, and then you're supposed to pull them apart and then make them again. I'm like, no, I've already made it once. And then, like, when you frame them and you put them up, it annoys me that there are jigsaw joints. And it's smooth. Oh, do people do that? Yeah, of course. Do they? You say, of course. I don't know. You, so that people, t- they finish puzzles and then they put them in frames and then put them up on walls. Yeah, some people will like frame them or at the very least like wow. put them on a, on a thing. Like there are some in the puzzle community because I absolutely didn't go on a two hour deep dive on puzzles at some <laughs> point in my life as I do with almost all things, me and my wealth of completely random information. <laughs> so a lot of artists have you can get these drawers like these big drawers and they're really flat thin drawers so a lot of like fine artists or people who make prints or whatever will store their spare art and prints in these drawers yeah and um a lot of people puzzle enthusiasts do that with their puzzles they make them and then they pop them on a slab and stick them in there and then they can be like ah oh, i made that i mean fair enough fair enough i just take a picture of it and then sell it because i mean the picture you might as well frame anyway that would be me, yeah, but then I'm, fair. I'm crotchety and cynical. And... No, that's fair. <laughs> you are a little bit, not yeah. as much as you think you are, though. I think it's more a bit. It's more of a bit for half of it. I just play into it. Yeah, but you're also British, so yeah. Well, the that's bit that's comes awesome. The in. bit comes built in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the basic UK package. <laughs> You popped into this plane of existence and it's one of those default settings you didn't have any control over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the T. Mm-hmm. Yeah, default this settings that are just concrete for this particular build. Sorry. Yeah, no. No, the RNG wasn't very good for me and when it came to those kind of things. <laughs> no, I think you should I think you should get the I think you should have like one of those um glass cases. With the door and the sh- the shelves, you just get one of those and you just put one one room on each shelf. That's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, back in the streaming days in my old you know streaming den, I did have a bunch of those glass face cabinets. And then at some point, I was like, mm, "You're be- you're becoming more nerd than actor." <laughs> Why not both? You can you can be a nerd actor. Because I'm not Henry Cavill. I can't really like get away with being as overtly nerdy as dude bros can but that being said i've been really struggling with my personal style so what i've eventually resorted to was there needs to be some element of anime in everything i wear some element like whether that's a little or on high host school host club like pin on my bag or whether it's an anime t-shirt there has to or an anime hat there has to be some element that's the only rule i'm giving myself to see if that helps me figure it out because especially with like my weight fluctuating and most of my clothes don't fit Mm. anymore mm-hmm. and it's so hot in summer like, what am i it's because you're in summertime <laughs> shut up end of summer <laughs> God. yeah i i think it's so great i think i think i think there are a lot of nerd actors that are that need to embrace it more i think that's my personal opinion yeah yeah it's just it's a uh, it's interesting it's interesting because it's hot out here. Yeah. Especially when like printed graphic t-shirts go through the wash like three times and they're wrecked. Mm. You know? Apparently, you don't, you're supposed to t- aren't you supposed to turn it inside out and then it's better? 
yeah, I mean, yeah. Who, but... Who's got time for that, though? <laughs> no, I do it. That's the thing is I do do that, but you're better off smart yeah. treating. I mean, it's nuts because if you want to go with a more expensive, like high-end brand like Shop Artico or Hype Lands, like Hype Land stands up the best in my opinion, mm-hmm. uh, you're paying like $40, $50 a T-shirt. But then if you go to like the Crunchyroll store or even Hot Topic, I, I don't know much about Fox Lunch's quality. It seems to be better quality than Hot Topic. I'm talking at you like, you know, these brands and what I'm talking about. But I know of Hot Topic and Crunchyroll. Yeah, Hot Topic and Crunchyroll, their fabric is like is like a it'll tear, like paper thin. Oh, really? Yeah, you um... run it through the wash like once and it's starting to fray around the edges. And I like I don't really use my dryer for most of my clothes anymore which means I should probably get comfortable with an iron again. <laughs> but what about Uniglo? Yeah, just... Uniglo Uniglo is doing doing graphic tees for 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 like anime brands yeah, and stuff like those, that. Yeah, those those are they're not bad. Mm-hmm. Uniglo is not bad either. Um I've got friends who are weebs who exclusively wear like anime t-shirts. Mhm. Like exclusively and they're really swaggy but they're dudes so the shirts fit differently. And like just the girl market for weeb stuff is still still like no you just need to start your own you need to start your own brand that's what it is start your own start your own weeb t-shirt brand miles it's so much work on a lady (laughs) like the licensing alone yeah exhausting yeah i'd rather produce anime than than start it fuck yeah which is something i'm looking into but it's something i really love to do good but that's a i need ip for that it's a whole yeah it's a whole different kettle of fish. We've been talking about me a lot. How are you doing? I'm all right. Same old life, really. I'm doing this as as a way to scrape the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Stave off the inevitable collapse of society and your mental Yeah. Life. Yeah. I found I found I was just like I think I was I was scrolling through random clips on TikTok. And and I and like I keep getting recommended Doctor Who podcasts that people put out, and I was like, I could do better than that. I could do a better show than that. That's my brother. <laughs> Pickle, say hi. <laughs> hi. Just with his full leg of tattoos out. So my brother had the genius idea of getting a massive tattoo on the back of his leg, right by his knee joint, two days before he flew out here. See me. Smart. Really smart. Mm-hmm. That's a smart move. The tattoo itself is fine, but my mum attached some second skin with some adhesive that he's had an allergic reaction to. So he broke out in like this horrible pustulant rash on the side of his leg down to his knee joint. And he's supposed to like be picketing with me and we're supposed to be out in the sun and doing stuff. And we managed to get him one good day of shopping, but he's been on Benadryl and calamine lotion and, and taking up his leg ever since because it just keeps getting worse. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least he's having a good time and he's at least he's over for the summer. <laughs> no, we managed to do a, a good shop before beforehand in which I bought him every anime t-shirt he was even vaguely interested in. Oh, um, great. And he hates it when I do that, but yeah. he did. He's wearing Haku t-shirt from Box Lunch right now. Great. Box lunch sponsor me, but uh, <laughs> Louis. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I doing. Do. I mean, like a lot yeah. of people make podcasts, and I think podcasts, as opposed to streaming, streaming can be like it's a lot of pretty intensive uh, work, mm. and it's it's very consistent, intensive like work. Whereas podcasts are a lot more chill because you're not dealing with you know hundred people in your comments asking questions and. Yeah, <clears throat> I think the people in in the people in the chat never really bothered me. Um, it was more just the it it's a very it's a very draining experience being live for four hours and 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 having to be on and high energy uh, for four hours. Oh, see, I never bothered with being high energy. Nah, that's your nah, mistake right nah. there. That was I know that's the bit for me is that's how I that's how my stream is, and so I was like, oh, God, it, it it takes it out of me for four hours. Uh, it's great fun, and I love doing it. But it was just like, and and I needed a different outlet. I think a different like creative endeavor. I think so. I just thought to try and try and make a make a thing that was a little bit. I'm very inspired by um, 
David Tennant's podcast that he did during the pandemic. And so I was just like, oh, I can do something that's that's completely ripping that off slightly. And then and then we just got, you know, I got I got some, someone I I kind of brainstormed on on a stream, on a live stream on Twitch with with the chat and with people that uh, uh, uh someone that worked on um the Orphan Black podcast. Oh yeah. Um, and he so he gave me some suggestions as well, and we 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 kind of threw together an idea, and that's what. And then I started reaching out to people, which was great, really. And and everyone's been so lovely to give me their time, because <laughs> I think the main thing is that that I don't. I, I, and you and I have talked about this before: is the imposter syndrome, the imposter syndrome of it all, um, and and uh, and not not wanting to be like. And you're 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 such a lovely person, and you're just like, yeah, no, of course, uh, no, you know, we got to support each other and all that kind of stuff. But there's always, I think, that that kind of, I don't know, would you say it's like a like a like a competitive nature for people in in the industry, in creative industries, or you know, that where 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 since you know you're a little worried that the time's not going to be taking up someone's valuable time or those kind of things, or it. it I don't know. What do you think? I mean, you're not talking about competitiveness. You're you're talking about an extension of imposter syndrome and also like a devaluing of your own mm. time and also underestimating how much the – like you're assuming that you're inconveniencing me mm-hmm. and you're not because if yeah. you were, I would say, no, I'm not free. So that's a – that's a you lacking confidence in your friendships and relationships and whether or not <laughs> you intrinsically have enough value for people to show up for you to assist you in your creative endeavors which is something you should discuss with your therapist oh trust me oh trust me it's as though I, we've had I, this conversation we've had this before, conversation before well. and i've had it multiple times elsewhere as well absolutely no 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 yeah, I, I, so I, I think generally generally speaking i believe uh what people do as opposed to what people say and if people are showing up for your podcast whether the podcast is a great success or not like us showing up like there isn't there isn't a dividend being paid if your podcast pops off like it's not social currency i think a lot of people in our industry uh, will operate based off social currency and part of the imposter syndrome that comes in with that is am i offering enough for them to want to contribute in this endeavor, mm-hmm. which is not you inviting someone over for coffee. It's a podcast. It's like, am I giving enough back? Because we are in like a very much barter economy in our industry as artists before people start getting paid. We are all doing friends for people's short films or we're reading friends scripts and giving them advice. Or we're helping them with auditions. It is very much a barter economy when we're all starting out. So when you get to something like this, where there could potentially be money involved, I think for all of us who are essentially freelance artists and laborers mm-hmm. as this, you know, whole strike and, and union nonsense is, is brought to light. Most of us, as soon as uh, money in terms of, or anything official creatively comes along, we're even more hesitant to ask the people around us to contribute. Uh, if we feel like we're not giving something in equal exchange back, but that's the beautiful thing about having friends and being creative is there doesn't necessarily have to be an equivalent financial exchange for something professional. The barter economy still does exist. And I know if I ever need your help setting up a podcast, you have all the knowledge that I need. Yes. And you're yeah. also like my friend and I like as a person. So Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. Hey, you know me. That's that's what I do. That's that's. I feel that's like you the... need to post it on the back of every door in your house and like in your wallet that says you're overthinking it. I feel like you're the <laughs> kind of person that needs a reminder like ten times a mm-hmm. day. Yeah, you're, you're overthinking it. I that is that is one of my tattoo concepts that I've thought of, of just having like a reminder, like right. It's not that deep. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one was F I F I L D I, which is the 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 Zay Frank. Bit, fuck it, let's do it. That one I couldn't get tattooed. That would be very dangerous for someone <laughs> like me. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'll end up Not living good. in a cu- in a in a cottage up in the Scottish Highlands if I have that tattooed on me. Hey, listen, I I, I will come Catch visit. Me stomping around with Tilda Swinton Swin with like two giant wolf dogs just out of my mind. That no. sounds amazing. That sounds amazing, Addy. Why would you not want that? That's so good. Because it's so cold and I'm a lizard. Oh, yeah. I grew yeah, up fair. in Australia and then I yeah. moved to Los Angeles, which is exactly the same as my hometown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair point. The temperature dips below 15 degrees and I'm like, I'm out. Well, you know, unless they're paying you, in which case you're fine to come unless to Unless they're paying me, in which case I will bitch my way through it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if someone were paying you to be in Scotland. Oh, yeah. Thriving. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Does someone want to pay me to be in Scotland? (laughs) Yes. Someone play, someone pay Addy to be in Scotland, please. She just, she just wants to be in the Highlands. Would you go to the Highlands or would you be in, in the city? to scotland since i was a kid and my dad is from glasgow and my on my mother's side we're mostly scottish mm. um which is you know just sourdough bread versus wonder white it's all the same you know uh i'm just like the slightly less colonize colonizery white bread mostly <laughs> yeah you know unlike yeah. you who is pinnacle pinnacle col- oh i am yeah i am i am <laughs> yeah Quarter, quarter German and three quarters English. That's 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 it, man. That's it. I don't get a say. I I I I do not need to get involved in any of that at all. My 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 ancestors are the reason everything's fucked. So you're welcome. That's why you have anxiety. It's generational karma. Yes, generational karma. F- focal yeah. focal point of generational generational karma. Yeah. That's it. Just too too anxious to. To overthrow a government and i'm too lazy so <laughs> yeah so together we're one f- we're one we're, we're two halves of like a, a, a fully functional of revolution yeah yeah <laughs> like how do i mix up the rest of my smoothie without tapping around and annoying you oh you can do it i'll just cut it tap it around oh there's something i want to ask your opinion on but i can't because it's industry related. Oh, I want to talk shit. But we okay, we'll we'll do it after we'll do it after the podcast. Well, let's 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 jump to our to our advice question. Oh, yeah, we're going to ask our advice question. This is from Charlie, uh, and it's a bit of a deep one, but I felt like it would be you'd have some very like deep insight for this. So so I hope this is good. How do you come out to parents who don't accept you? <laughs> well. And I say I saved this one because as soon as I read it, I was like, "Ooh, that's a that's a that's a good Addy question." Because Addy is gonna have yeah. I have <clears> thoughts <throat> and opinions about it. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts and opinions, yes, indeed. Okay, I think first and foremost, if if the asker is saying, you know, how do you come out to parents who are not accepting? I think there's probably been a history of either homophobic rhetoric or my brother is playing Hades so loud. <laughs> just look all the voice actors in that game sound extremely sexy but that's not what i'm trying to do right now oh i know it's, so, um, it's such a sexy game oh it's so sexy anyway um i'm assuming that there's a that there's a that there's a history there of um homophobia that has been clocked by our lovely charlie um i would say my first question for them is to assess their safety level um if their parents aren't accepting um to sort of gauge best to worst case scenario of what that response would look like and for me a best to worst case scenario would look like you know best case you know you can continue living with them and they commit microaggressions and um are you know verbally unsupportive and that's very erosionary to someone's mental health and emotional health um and then you know worst case scenario parents still kick kids out you know yeah um so i would be curious as to what sort of living situation charlie has and what kind of support network they have because if you know that your family 
is is homophobic and isn't accepting of a LGBTQIA plus lifestyle, um, there is a high possibility that they could cut you out of their lives. So I think it's really important to make sure that you have your safety net set, that you have your people who will have your back, that you have like a little bit of money put away if you have to move out. Um, you know, if it's something that you're really determined to do while you still live at home, if you still live at home, um, get anything really precious and important to you out of the house and, and somewhere safe, just in case, uh, before you come out, because you, you know, if they don't react super poorly, then it's better to feel silly about being dramatic than to have them react extremely poorly and then to potentially not have a passport and, not have enough clothes and not have enough money or means to support yourself and then be couch surfing while you're, you know, riding being alienated from your family. Um, and this is a really extreme example, but that's, that's not a huge amount of context to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're young, if you're like still in school, um, <clears throat> and you are absolutely dead certain that your parents won't be accepting, um, I hate, I hate to say this because no one should have to stay in the closet, but excuse me, protect yourself first. And if that means not coming out until you graduate and you are uh, legally emancipated from your parents, you hit 18 and they don't have the say over what you do um, or how you behave anymore, then Share with your friends, build your community, get a part-time job if you can, start saving money. Um, I don't know this home situation. There's a lot of detail missing, but protect yourself. And you may end up with parents who, you know, you think it's going to be this huge thing. And maybe it isn't. Maybe one of them is like, oh my gosh, it completely changes their tune. I don't know if you have both parents or one parent, but... Mm. My mum was very chill about it. Um, and my birth father, who I don't speak to, was not, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people encounter that. They'll encounter, encounter one parent who comes around and is more accepting, if not supportive, and one parent who isn't. And that's, I think, pretty standard. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Uh, and, you know, there's so little detail here because I think it also the level of danger changes depending on where in the spectrum you are coming out as bisexual and as 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 existing in the world as a bisexual is inherently less dangerous. It's less confronting for parents. It's less dangerous being out in the world. And I am very I'm like cishet presenting, I guess you could yeah. say like I just there's, there's a screen of safety there. Yeah. Yeah, unless my girlfriend is with me, like interacting with other queer people can be touch and go because they don't know from my everything uh, that I'm queer and a lot of queer people are very on the fence about bisexual people anyway, which is fine. And I totally get where they're coming from uh, and it makes sense to me and I understand it. So, you know, if, you're, if your niche is, is gay or lesbian, that comes with stronger prejudice from intolerant communities uh and the same goes for you know if you're trans and non-binary i mean trans people are the most at risk in the lgbtqia community of uh all sorts of unpleasantness so my my first thought for like young queer people is always safety think about your safety first and make sure you have a buffer because even though we've come a really really long way you really got to look out for yourself you really got to look out for yourself and your safety and that means having a support network that will catch you and having a bit of money put away you cannot stress enough Just yeah having a bit of money um and having a like a free healthcare hotline to call if it all goes sour and you need to talk out the big feelings because when something traumatic happens like your family shitting on you for being queer anything traumatic if you talk about it within 72 hours, it significantly reduces chances of developing complex trauma or PTSD by like 75%. So, is that true? You, oh. uh -huh. 
also playing Tetris within 72 hours of a traumatic huh. event. Talking about it within 72 hours and playing Tetris within 72 hours dramatically decreases like the ironing in process of CPTSD and PTSD. Wow. Because your, your brain's your brain's setting, it's running, it's like running that track. And yeah. something about those two things, make it, it helps your neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. I think. So it keeps your brain kind of soft so it can't like dig in um, in some weird way. I don't know. It does some really cool, there's some really cool studies on it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not amazing advice, but it's the only advice I have. Is make well, sure I mean, because it's not a specific safe. example. And I think, honestly, I think that's better and that it's not, not a very... Don't tell them until yeah. you're in a position where if it all goes tits up. I'm very cautious, though. Like, I plan A through Z mm -hmm. when I do anything. Yes. Um, but that would, like, if I was in that position, I would make sure I had some money, make sure I had a, a friendship group, make sure I had someone, to, like, somewhere to go. Yes. Like, last minute, no questions asked. If yeah. Things got bad. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the, you know, Charlie, we're, we're only get, kind of giving gen generic advice because, you know, first of all, we don't know the context around your living situation. And even if you went into more detail, you know, it, we're just, we're just people. We can't, we're not, you know, licensed. Yeah. I don't to, have a 10 step you know. plan of making your parents more tolerant because that's, yeah, exactly. Um, so people so, change when they want to change and how they want to change. And if you start, you know, trying to introduce them to more queer, content or people it a you could tip your hand before you're ready and uh b you can make them more set in their ways yeah they could double it's down almost for better sure. to rip the band-aid off all at once and be like this is it deal with it and if they're yeah. like no you can be like okay you can be in a position to be like all right cool yeah Bye. and i think it's except that that's a, an outcome dan savage talks about um and this is more for people that that are not uh, uh, living at home. So we don't, you know, we don't know if you're living at home or not. But but Dan Savage talks about how you give your parents a year, a be a year to be super upset. And after the year, you if they're still being upset, that's when you can be like, this is enough. I like, and that and then that's when you start limiting the access that they have to you. But this is, of course, if you're not living at home and you have a support network and you're self sufficient. If you're living at home, like Addie said, I think it's it's about whether, you know, what is the importance of telling them? Is it because you want to live your live your truth more openly? Is it because you need to, you know, there's there's a chance? Is it it it, it does oh, hit the mic? Does it come from a a place of like I need to get ahead of the bad news because people might see me out with my partner, and the news is going to get back to them? Or is it like I want to embrace this and I need their support, you know? Because those yeah, are, those are different be, mindsets to go into. I want to be extremely it. clear in that in no way, shape, or form do I think it is good or healthy for someone to live in the closet for the entirety of their life. I am not advising that you never tell your parents your situation, but if you are living with them, assess your safety, and I don't just mean like physical safety, like becoming unhoused or you know, somebody trying to give you a smack in a rage. Um, I mean, also, if, like, gauge whether or not, if you're, like, 16, if you can handle another two years of, like, microaggressions and sly comments, waiting for them to come around to the fact that you're queer, um, how is that going to, be like, you got to, you got to weigh you got to weigh and cons, yeah. like where you're at. And if you, if you have a partner and you want to tell them so that you can date more openly, I absolutely respect and appreciate that. Um, if you're like sort of older and you live with your parents, like if you're, you know, in your early twenties, I know that moving out is really difficult to do financially for most people, especially in this economy. Um, so it's worth like chatting with your friends and making sure that like you could potentially crash on couches for a while or get a house share with people that you trust who are part of your community. Yeah. I I always regretted taking so long to come out. Um you know, I it's something I wish I had done earlier and something I wish I had had the ability to do earlier. Um <clears throat> but in no way, shape or form am I encouraging you to stay in the closet for the the rest of 
you're like, I think as far as your parents are concerned, only you can assess, you know, your safety level. Um, and I think you're absolutely right, Miles, like giving your parents time. And a year seems like a really long time, but believe me, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's believe really not. Believe me, it's not. Giving them time uh, to digest the information uh, and sort of do their own learning and their own research is probably a great idea when you finally do sort of like pull the ripcord. Um, but I do think that everyone should have the right to live their most authentic life. Yeah, absolutely. And it might be it might be a good thing. It might be it might end up being like a super positive step in your relationship. Yeah, it could be a really wonderful thing and they could, you know, be angry and go through a whole crisis of faith and come out the other side better. Um, but it's also important to prepare for, you know, whether it's a good outcome or whether it's a bad outcome and you end up not having a close relationship with your parents. Yeah. The most important thing for you is to to live your life as truly and authentically as you can. Yeah. But be safe about it. Yes. You know, we yeah. all have to be safe about how we go about our lives, you know, whether we're queer or straight or male or female or non-binary or trans. Like, there, we all do things to protect our own safety. Like, I don't go walking alone most of the time or at night to protect myself as a woman my partner dresses differently depending on where we're going like if we're traveling through texas she dresses differently because she's a yeah. hundred footer yeah you know yeah you know she's gay from 100 feet away but she covers certain tattoos you know we all do things to manage our safety until we are in a more secure environment and there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that um so yeah, i just want to be really clear so i don't want you to misunderstand <laughs> yeah live yes. your best life because you will be miserable without it like you always have that question mark in the back of your mind and your parents will find out eventually. Yeah, you exactly. Tell them eventually, but yeah. make sure it's on, try and make sure it's on your own terms and that you have a safety net so that they can't hold anything over you because that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't, you would, you don't want to be like, be seen like in the closet to them specifically and then no one else and be getting married to, to someone and have to like, you know, after the engagement, start being like, hey, by the way, <laughs> mom, dad, by the way, this is a tiny thing that I need to chat to you about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that helps, Charlie. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a deep topic and we're sorry that your parents are like that, but hopefully it's, it's better than, than, than not. Um, and we hope that you have... It was a very vague prompt. I'm extremely concerned for you now, so I hope it all goes well. Yes. And I hope that this was helpful. I think it was. Very much so. Yeah, yeah it was exactly being... what I was expecting from you. It was exactly as well-rounded a piece of advice as I was expecting. Yeah, just the reality of being queer, even in today's modern day and age, is, is, extremely, is extremely complex. And, you yep. know, I can only speak to my personal experience and the experience of those around me and you know the research that my surely somewhat limited understanding of what being queer is is like um i can only give the best advice i can given my own personal yeah. circumstances yeah which is great so that's that <laughs> it's helpful it is helpful i'm sure it will be um so, so that's that's the end of the podcast. What it, uh, people follow you on? And are, are you going to be posting more on TikTok again? What's what are you coming up to that's that's promotable? That's not something that you can't promote right now. Um, nothing. Really. <laughs> I'm 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 rounding out my my social media obligations. Yeah, uh, and then I'm going to be taking a break from you know sponsored this sponsored that for a while. But yeah. um, otherwise, I you can find me at. Adelaide Kane on Instagram and real Adelaide Kane on TikTok and excuse me, maybe I'll stream a little bit coming up if strike continues for much longer to give me something to do. But I'll let you know. <laughs> you can let everybody know. Yes, let me know first, please, so that I can join you. Thank you. I will. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. I'm just I'm just gonna be buffing around like an asshole. That's that's everybody else. 
as is everyone else. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Thank you, Addy. Thanks, Maya. Yay! Yay! Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye! Bye.